What's happening, everybody? I'm back. It's me, your resident supervillain, Mr. J. Washington, and I'm so excited to be here for my official Avengers Endgame review. Now, if you have not seen it yet, I'm letting you know I'll jump. There will be spoilers, because there is no way I can talk about this film and not talk about all the dope shit that happened. And this movie is so epic, it's so dope. I normally do the reviews by myself, but I had to bring the homie in. You see me see him on the Doom Patrol reviews with me on his channel. What's today, Marshall? What's up, bro? God, man. Oh, before we get started, overall thoughts on Avengers Endgame? Uh, when I came out of the movie, I initially said it was a perfect movie, and I want to watch it again to verify that, but what I will say with complete and utter confidence, it is the perfect finale. I've never seen a better wrap-up to a saga, a storyline, a series than this. I know, obviously, we're going to move on after this, and we're going to still have some of these old characters. Perfect finale to the last 11 years and that's the thing i was arguing with somebody last night on a podcast that i walked off of because they were so stupid wow like i've never walked off a podcast in my life what I podcast to, was this it's this my homeboy's little podcast he does and i was like i was there and this dude was like well it wasn't the end of it wasn't the culmination it was just the end of just captain american iron man story i mean it didn't wrap up 11 movies i said it's the end of the infinity saga right it's the end well i mean is it is it like they can still... I was like, if you don't shut the no, fuck no, up. No, the stones are gone. Yes, they technically have the ability to go back in time and get them again if they want, but their stones are gone out of their universe. We need to acknowledge the fact that they're probably never coming back. They're never coming back. And this way, you you end that story with that. Um, but yeah, for my overall thoughts, dude, I walked out the theater the first time I saw it on Tuesday was like, holy shit. I just witnessed that because... I witnessed the culmination of 22 movies in 11 years. I watched some give their life, some become new characters, some take new, new paths and whatnot. And I saw all of that and I was like, holy shit, this is happening. I love this movie from beginning to end. I think it is the perfect send off. It is. It's amazing. It's the perfect send off. It, like you said, it wrapped up. Again, the fact that they brought, this is one of the biggest things that was a wrap up for me. They brought back Natalie Portman. Now, that's a good question. Was she actually in the movie or was that footage from Thor the Dark World? No, no, no. That's her. Are we sure? Unless because she didn't say anything. I genuinely think that that is... Oh. I'm going to go rewatch Thor Dark World because remember, all they did was then add Rocket, which all that takes is CGI. Well, no, no. They brought Rene Russo back as well. No, I know. You're talking about the, Thor's mom? Yeah. Well, yes. She had a real scene. I'm saying oh, I'm okay, pretty sure okay. with Natalie Portman, that was the scene when she woke up with the Infinity Stone in Asgard. They just had that same scene of her waking and up just add and just adding rock added rocket standing. Okay, I got what you're saying. But nonetheless, they they can they closed oh, off the right. Jane, yes. They closed yes. off the Jane storyline yes. that we don't have to worry about her no more because we hadn't seen her since Thor Dark World. Right. So they they capped that off. Thor's mother, seeing Renee Russo was amazing because first of all, Renee Russo looks beautiful still. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you're reminded that she was raised by witches. So seeing Thor as, before I go to that, motherfucking <laughs> fat Thor is the MVP of this movie. <laughs> fat Thor looking like the dude from the Big Lebowski. That and it is amazing. one point where they're going to set up the stuff for the quantum room, to get into the quantum room at, at the Avengers headquarters. And Tony's walking past him. He's like, on your left, Lebowski. And it's just... <laughs> is that the line? Yeah. Okay, I'm embarrassed. I've been talking mad shit to people for weeks when they're like, it's three hours. When am I going to pee? And I got a warning beforehand where someone said there is a good 30 to 40 minute chunk of setup where Ant-Man is explaining the quantum realm, how time travel works, how Tony's going to like figure it out. That is the moment. And I held it and I held it. And the problem is I've been sick this week. So I've been drinking a lot of fluids and I just couldn't hold it anymore. I pissed twice before the movie started. I just couldn't hold it. So I took off and I missed the Lebowski line. That upsets me. But I could have missed far worse stuff, so I'll live with it. And I really don't... You know what? The Russos had always said that there was not any fluff in it. And I don't think there was. I think everything needed to be set up. I think the Quantum Realm stuff needed to be acknowledged because some people did not see Ant-Man and the Wasp. Well, and you know what? But even to that point, I still think you needed to sort of see Ant-Man and the Wasp. So I... It's funny because I was running this down real quick of the, the must-see movies in the MCU. If, let's say, for whatever reason, you didn't have time to watch the 21 movies before uh -huh. this one, I would argue that you need to see uh, Iron Man, uh, Captain America, the first Avenger. Thor. Uh, no, not the first Thor. You need to see Avengers. You need to see Thor, the Dark World. Okay. Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh-huh. Uh, Doctor Strange. 
Doctor Strange. Avengers Age of Ultron. Avengers Age of Ultron. I know what you're doing. Spider-Man. Because you need to set up the relationship between Peter, Peter and, and, and Tony. Yeah. Uh, and why that's so important. Um, and uh, Black Panther. No, not because think about it. That yeah. really just sets up Black Panther. You don't even necessarily need to see Captain Marvel either. Uh, Ant Man and the Wasp, and then uh, Infinity War. You need to see 10 movies. Yeah, you do need to see Ant Man and the Wasp because of their post credit scene. You need those 10. If you see those 10 movies, you're then caught you can up. Watch this and you, you can make it through just fine. Yeah, you're cool. You're yeah. caught up. That that makes a good that makes absolute sense. Uh, eleven movies, Civil War. You do need to see Civil War because you need to understand why Tony and Cap uh, are butt heads. Cap are butting heads. Yeah, you need to know why they're butt heads. Yeah, absolutely. Which let me talk about Fat. Like I said, Fat Thor was great. I want to talk about Tony Stark real quick. So in the beginning, after the beginning, first of all, the beginning fucks you up because you see the mo- the moment we saw in the trailer with Cliff with Clint Barton and his daughter, and he's teaching her how to shoot, and then he even says, "Look at you, Hawkeye," and I was like. Wait, does she become Kate Bishop, or is Kate Bishop gonna be another person, or are they gonna do instead of his son arguing for the mantle, it's gonna be his daughter? Because you do have Kate Bishop who becomes Hawkeye, right. but Clint Bart, Clint's younger son, takes up the mantle too. So I think they're gonna flip it on his head. But that happens, and he watches his family take that snap. He does, that's the thing that's fucked up. He doesn't even watch well, it. Well, he doesn't watch it. He, he just turned. Which I thought was such an interesting and like a poignant thing that the Russo brothers did is the fact that, remember, he's Hawkeye. He sees everything. Every, and, and the one thing he did... Seeing his family. They just were gone. He, he looked away for half a second. All he his saw was the dust. was gone. And then he was like, where does she go? He turned around and the rest of his family were gone. He didn't even see the dust. He was just like, where the fuck are they? Yeah, but the dust, like the dust for his daughter was right there, but I don't think he acknowledged Oh, he saw the dust of his daughter. He saw he the dust of his was. daughter. Right, he didn't know what it was. But it was, you know, it was intricate. But then you go and you fast forward and uh, Tony and Nebula are on the Benatar and Tony looks sickly. He looked so, the crazy part is Tony's recording. So we think everything starts off years. This is still set in 2018. You need to know that because he even tells you it's been 22 days since everything happened. Not not a year, right. 22 days. So he and Nebula are on there. They bonded and they tried to fix the fuel cells and then they don't. And at one point he just passes out and Nebula puts him in a chair and just has him sit there. Because this is it, the oxygen's running out. Nebula lets him have the last of the food because obviously being mainly cyborg at this he point- He needs she it more than her. She doesn't need to eat as much. And she, the, the scene showing her giving it to him. Right. You know. It was it was beautiful. And like and so that's where we are then alluded to the fact that obviously the, the end scene of Captain Marvel yeah. was the beeper going off and her going, where's Nick Fury? So clearly she has already met up with the Avengers on Earth because Captain Marvel shows up to bring the ship back. So to basically Earth. they know that they're out in space. Right. And so she's traveling space, so that's how she finds them. Again, people are like, wait, that scene at the end of Captain Marvel isn't in the movie? No. I appreciate that because I they've, appreciate done, it. they've done that a lot where they'll just replay a Ant-Man, scene. Ant Man, Civil a, War, stuff right. like that. They didn't need to. We set it up, this is how we know her. Like only you only know the cert, a certain few, and she comes back, she brings them in. Then you see Tony. Tony looks even more frail when he's in the Avengers facility. Then he, and he's just he's delirious, but he's hurt. He's like, "Where were you? I needed you." Right. You know, where were you? That's exactly why you need to see Civil War because you need to understand the idea of how Tony and Steve became good friends. Which is funny. They did a really good job over the course of eleven years showing that rift starting to like bubble. So like it happened in Avengers. Remember they had their fight yeah, with yeah. the Loki staff. Yeah. It happened again in Age of Ultron when they were cutting the wood. And remember at one point Steve just ripped the, the wood, wood apart because they're making their arguments. And then Civil War it hits its fever pitch. So like this is the thing that was so sad is that if when they work together they're unstoppable. And Steve wasn't there for Tony at the time, and he lost Spider Man. And he almost died, and they couldn't he beat said, Thanos. He said, they were like, yo, where were you? I couldn't beat him here on Earth. He's like, I was getting a planet thrown in my face. <laughs> Man. Which was the craziest shit in the world when you thought about it. Like, he did get hit in the face with a fucking planet. Which, okay, so the one thing I want to talk about, there's there's some emotional stuff that happens throughout the movie, but yeah. I just want to... I wanna yeah, we're not going to go, because it's a three-hour movie, we're not going to go bit by bit, so... There, we don't have enough time for that. I know you want to sit here and watch us go three hours over this movie, but... What I thought was so beautifully done early on was showing how traumatic this whole process was. 
how it was traumatic even to fucking Thanos in the sense that after it happened, he decided to re-snap his fingers to destroy the stones and blew off half of his fucking body. So if we see that scene in the trailer where she, where he says, Thanos used the stones again. You think, you're thinking he might have been still on Earth. No, he did it for another planet. And like he said, like Winston just said, when you see Thanos, he is walking in a garden, picking fruit. Limping. Limping. Like, you're like, oh, is he still beat up from the battle? Because that's what you would think. Right. Again, 22 days. Right. He could be still nursing his wounds from that. Right. He gets in, he's making a pipe, does a, does a pinch of salt and all this good shit. <laughs> I, I noticed that for a second. I was like, wait, so my nigga Thanos just up in the crib? Season? Like, he making some jambalaya shit? Like, that's what he do now? <laughs> I mean, nigga picked up a good, like, pinch and... <laughs> he, yo, my nigga Thanos, Thanos Bay, dog. He said he's, Salt Bay, he said... <laughs> so I'm gonna show you my Thanos Bay hoodie too matter of fact oh shit okay and so but then you see him and he he's just beat up burnt half to death on his on his face and arms and everything and basically the Avengers found out where he was and they go at him which mind you we got to see some of that at the end of Captain Marvel about how badass she was my god every time she fought in this film beginning and the ending she was Fucking Thanos up. Bro. But here's the beautiful thing about it too. Cause this had to shut up all the crybaby whiners that have been the little incels and all those. She couldn't do it alone completely. Right. She can beat his ass. She couldn't do it alone because everybody's like, Well, who is this woman? She's gonna come in and just beat Thanos and blah blah blah. She is the most powerful creature, but again, he's called the Mad Titan for a reason. Because later on in the film, when the epic battle happens, we see this motherfucker handling five or six Avengers at one time. But she, but I will give her her credit. Even to the, there was one point where they're fighting over the gauntlet, and he headbutts her. She don't even fucking move. She just looks at him, mm, nigga. But wait, it was so bad in that scene too, where she, they're fighting over the gauntlet. Thanos is like, man, fuck this. Takes the power stone and out her ass and has to hit her with it. Also. So fan service happens several times. We saw in the, all the Avengers movies that he's worn the gauntlet on his left hand, which all of us comic book fans know he doesn't. He wears it on the right. They made a new gauntlet. It's basically an Iron Man gauntlet, and he wears it on his right finally to fight with it. Granted, yeah, you have no choice but to put it on the right hand, but it was fa fan service for that. But back to the fight they had when Thanos' ass is whooped earlier. So she comes in, the Hulk comes in, Captain, everybody's just coming, they thumping him. And so they're like, yo, where the stones? Well, not the Hulk, it was the Hulk Buster suit. I mean, Hulk was Buster, Bruce, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. It was the Hulk Buster. And so, and War Machine, they're like, yo, where the fucking stones at? And he was like, they're gone. Disappeared in Adams. And they're like, yo, you just used them shits two days ago. And then they're like, oh, you're lying. And and then, well, but, no, no, because he said, I used the stones to get rid, rid of, of the, the stones. Stone. Exactly. He said, because once the deed was done, there was no need for them. Right. And they're like, you're a liar. Nebula was like, my father is a lot of things, but what he's not is a liar. And then he says, thank you, daughter. Maybe I wasn't as cruel to you. As what? As soon as he says that lie. And that's why I cut him off at that moment. Thor had enough. All you see is Stormbreaker swing in and go, what? Lobbed. First of all, they cut his hand off earlier in right. that little fight. They cut right. his hand off with the gun. So just right. in case, he couldn't do anything. Then they cut this mom's head off. And everyone's like, Thor, what the fuck? Thor, what you do? And Thor says the greatest line he could have said at that moment. I went for the head. I mean. That was a pretty baller ass line. Like, but but what's what's beautiful about this is now you set up. They're fucked. The stones are gone. So now it, it, we get a five years later time jump. And what we end up finding out is that everybody's had to move on. So Cap leads a uh, support group. A support group, which. Shout out to, uh, was that Anthony? Or Joe. That was Joe. Joe, so Joe. Joe Russo had a cameo in the support group, which was pretty cool. Also, uh, there's another person in the support group. I'll who? tell you about it. Is, go ahead and talk about Joe Russo. No, no, it's fine. Oh. Just, he, who? Jim Starling. Who's that? The bald dude. Yeah, yeah, who, who's, what, what, what is my brain not? He is the creator of Thanos. Oh. Yes. That's pretty cool. I and I what I really love about the Russo brothers doing this is how many little baby Easter eggs they've thrown throughout the film. So uh, time jump for half a second on this. Like for example, at one point when we're time traveling, we end up uh, in the '70s, and Yvette Nicole Brown, from, uh, most famous from Community, she actually ends up being an agent in this. Yeah, that, that jumped out of me was pretty damn cool. Uh, you had the fact that they brought a lot of people back. So we talked about how Jane Foster showed up again, which was really cool. Howard Stark shows up. Howard Stark shows up, which is super cool. Uh, you get uh, you get to get you get a recreation of, uh, oh. of getting the Power Stone. Real quick, 
Jarvis is the only character from the TV shows to make it to the movie. Jarvis in Agent Carter is in Endgame, excuse me. Which is pretty cool. That was pretty but, fucking dope. Go, go ahead, what you're saying. I wanted to make sure I included No, that. no, no. Uh, you had both of those. You had, uh, obviously, Angel Bassett got to come back in, which was pretty cool. Mm. Uh, Winston Duke got to come in, which was pretty cool. You had to see Mbaku be at, back in the mix again. Uh, this is one that I didn't pick up on at first, but someone pointed out to me uh, on Twitter. So during the very end, uh, when Tony dies, obviously this is a spoiler, you've seen it, so yeah. you're not surprised by this. When Tony dies and we're doing the- his, Oh, who, his, his who the service, kid is? The, yeah. kid, the kid was the kid Har- from Iron Man 3. It's Harley Keener. Yeah. Iron Man 3 kid. Yeah. Right? That, that's his name. I didn't yeah. remember his name. I, I knew who it was. Iron Man 3. But I was like, who the fuck is that? Because was it, everybody was trying to figure out. It was like, all right, I know who all these people are, right. these people. And people were like, who's this teenage kid? And then people, some people even had nerves saying, well, why isn't he still a kid? Again, he grew up. Five years. He didn't get snapped. Yeah. Time, time had. Well, he could have got snapped and he's back. But no, oh, he went he age. Because he grew. Because yes. he grew. Yes, yes, Which yes. is another thing, too. So when people were snapped out, they didn't age. At all. They came right back when they got snapped Even back. though when they were brought back five years later, time has moved past, forward. So we were discussing this, and we thought that this is an interesting thing, and you should put this in the comments and tell us what you think might happen with this. So for anybody that's been paying attention to TV this year, there's a show called Manifest where about a plane disappears for f- three years, five years, something like that, and then re-shows up into life. Mm-hmm. And so the people on the plane... Literally, it just felt like they were in some turbulence, and they're exactly the same, but everybody else has moved on because it's like, oh, this was years ago. Like, I can't believe you're alive. So it's a similar situation with the snapping, and that anybody that was snapped, it literally felt like it was a split second. You closed your eyes one second because you were turning into dust, and then you woke up, and you were right back where you were. Whereas for everyone else, it's been five years now. So you've grown older. You've been dealing with the loss of all your loved ones. Like, we were talking about... Did niggas go and get married to new people because you got to repopulate the earth and your whole family right your whole thought disappears? right your whole thought like, process is like yo half of all of half of all living creatures, not even just humans, living creatures were removed from existence. Which I think one of the coolest moments when we did get the snap the reverse snapping that I thought was very cool the way that they illustrated that people came back to that the beings came back to life. The first thing you see is Scott Lang noticing a bunch of birds in the trees. It's not all of a sudden hearing all these humans. It's seeing birds. That, which I thought was so cool. Because like, it was that little tiny thing. I was like, because I even saw it, and I literally, when I saw it in the screen, I was like, everything worked. And I was like, my boy who was with me was like, how? I was like, the fucking birds. Because now there's an overpopulation of birds. But also, I want to go back to the support group real quick. Hmm. Joe Russo did something for the first time that's ever been done in any MCU film. Hmm. He played the first openly gay character ever in the MCU. What do you mean? There's never been an openly gay character. We've had bisexuals. Did he, I, I, maybe I wasn't paying attention enough to his dialogue. What did he say? He said he went on a date with another dude. Oh. It's the first time since his partner had been snapped away. Okay. He felt there was a connection with him, and he's going on a date with him again. I see. I didn't. I wasn't even paying. And that just goes to show I wasn't paying attention. I heard him say he went on a date, but I wasn't paying attention mm-hmm. to the specifics because, yeah, to me, again. Love is love and all that. So I wasn't even listening for that. I was just like, oh, that's a regular thing. So that's pretty cool. I didn't even notice that. So that's been the biggest thing about Kevin Feige, the Russo brothers, and Marvel Studios as a whole. They have been showing off diversity and inclusive inclusivity with people who are underrepresented and underutilized. You get that in that moment. You get that in one of the best fucking moments I think I ever saw in the A-Force. If you don't know who the A-Force is... It is all of the badass women in the Marvel Universe. Well, then, so this was what was cool. There were little fan service, beautiful moments that made everybody shout for joy at one point or another. So you had a shout out to the A-Force, yeah. which was a beautiful moment where it's like, there's no, like, you're powerful, but there's no way Captain Marvel, you're going to make it through. She's like, don't worry, I got backup. All of a sudden, here comes No, she said, it. no, no, she didn't even say it. I think it was like, uh, Scarlet Witch was like, don't worry, she got backup. Scarlet Witch drop in, Shuri drop in, Valkyrie drop in. Okoye Peter, drop in. Peter Potts in a motherfucking Iron Man suit drop in. Sorry, you got to know the name. Rescue drops in. That is rescue. Thank you. That's a good point. You're right. You're right. (laughs) That is rescue. That is not her in Iron Man. That is rescue. You're right. Rescue drop in. Uh, Mantis is there. Mantis comes flying. Gamora. She's about to fuck people up because the one thing that people were giving a lot of grief about Mantis is that Mantis is a badass martial artist. And so this is the first time that we actually see her take a fighting stance like she's actually going to do something. Uh, 
Who else came back? What other? What other? Valkyrie matter? was there. I already mentioned that. Uh, uh, Gamora and Nebula. No, Gamora and Nebula. There, were there any more women? That was all. I think that was all the women. Because the wasp was helping get the uh, the queen. wasp. No, the wasp. She yeah, was wasp was there too. Wasp, wasp was there too. So they put they put all the women. That was so. That was badass. But you had little moments like this throughout the film, which I thought is part of the reason why this was a perfect finale. You gave fans literally everything they needed to feel included and wrapped up. So you had. At one point when they're going back to the original battle in New York, uh, and you see Hulk coming in and just being a piece of shit and slamming stuff. And then Professor Hulk, when you first get the, the introduction of Professor Hulk, you're like, this is great, this is happening. He's like, man, I'm sorry about that, y'all. That's embarrassing. He's like, he's like well, do it up. Pretend. He was like, he's like, like, uh, he was like you got it. He mm. took his shirt off. I was like, I feel like this is gratuitous. Just, uh, <laughs> you, had, <laughs> you had, you had uh, kind of a scroll on scroll battle of Captain America versus Captain America, but what it actually was was Cap from the Future versus Captain the Past, which was pretty cool. Oh, and it was so great because you see Cap, our current Cap who goes back in time, he's like, you gotta be shitting me. <laughs> <laughs> so you had that, you had... Uh, which also, real quick, hold your second thought. Services to a line that we get earlier in that scene because Tony <laughs> is... man sees his ass. So no, Tony sees it first. Tony's like, you know what, Cap? That suit did nothing for your ass. That man who's a tiny formal Tony shoulder was like, you know what, Cap? I think it's great. You that's know what? That's America's ass. And then when, when Cap, when Future Cap finally wins, he goes, he the, way he gets, no, the best part is the way he wins the fight. So he's being choked out by past himself, and he goes, Bucky's alive. And he goes, wait, what? And then he elbows himself <laughs> in the face. And so then when he rolls himself over, he goes, that is America's, America's ass. ass. <laughs> and just strolls on off. But there are some beautiful moments like these little Easter eggs. So, for example, he gets on the elevator. You think it's about to be a callback to the elevator scene? Oh. And all of a sudden, he w w leans over to sit well and goes, Hell, I Because what it is, the, so the Strike Force and Agent, uh, fuck is his name? I can't remember his name. You're, you're talking about Crossbones. Sitwell. No, a Agent well, Sitwell. Sitwell. Sitwell, Crossbones, all them. So, again, like the fight, you think the fight in Winter Soldier. And they're like, no, nah, the secretary told me to take over the briefcase. Now, they, this is in Avengers, this is Avengers one time. Right. No one knows. That Hydra yet. Has infiltrated S.H.I.E.L.D. Right. And so he's like, well, I think I need to call the secretary. He's like, no. Nah. And when he sees one of the agents put his hand on his gun. Just like the other elevator scene. So you're thinking, oh, we're going to get this fight again. He's like, hell. And everybody's like, well, shit. Okay. Wait, wait, if he said those words, go ahead, nigga. Take this. Like, wait, but that what was so cool about that was, anybody that knows the books, there is a storyline where Captain America is working for Hydra, but then it turns out it was actually an undercover mission because of the Infinity Stones for him to do that. So that was actually an amazing nod to like find a way to squeeze that in there. You had the fact that, uh, well, because you have Fat Thor, at one point, he has Stormbreaker and his Mjolnir. He goes War Thor, which is essentially a nod to Falstaff because he even intertwines the his beard. beard to make the braid. So Falstaff at one point has Th uh, Stormbreaker and turns into War Thor. So that was a nod to that. You had the fact that Captain America is able to wield Mjolnir. That is a whole other storyline yes, where it he is. is worthy to do that at one but point. But it also was a callback to Avengers Age of Ultron. When he started to wiggle it and Thor got a little nervous, but he what was so funny is when Cap did it, he goes, I knew it! Like he knew that Cap would be able to so do it. So what it, what I think it is, I think Steve was worried that he could actually lift it. So he made himself not be able to lift it. He so in Avengers Eight, they're saying so what I was talking to people, uh -huh. when he lifted an Age of Ultron uh -huh. and it jumped, yeah. he knew, Oh, I can get this. But he wasn't worthy at that point. To be honest with you, I don't think he was, because he still had his own demons he needed to exercise. Okay, that's fair. So that's by the time it was time to fight Thanos and it, the, everything was on the line, he was willing to sacrifice everything to save the universe, you, he became worthy. And also, you have to remember about this, when wielding Mjolnir, or Mew Mew, as, meow, they, meow. Call, as they call it in <laughs> Thor. Cat Diddy. Get, meow Mew Mew. <laughs> when, remember, the inscription on it is, let he whoever, if he is worthy, let he whoever holds this obtain the powers of Thor. That is an important line to remember because Cap not only wields it, he uses it every single way in which Thor does. And he better. He <laughs> called lightning like a mother. My favorite is my nigga said, bop, hit him with the shield, threw fucking Mjolnir, got the shield back, blocked some shit, fucking hit the nigga with the shield, did a whiplash through the ground where a chain flipped fucking Thor. And then the best one is when Thanos was about to bop his ass. It was a callback to Avengers. He threw his shield and Mjolnir. They did a clap Black, and then a thunder uh, clap uh, uh, Thanos. I was like, this is exactly why that Captain America is such a badass. Is he the strongest? No. He's the strongest human, sure. 
But is he the strongest? No, but he is such a skilled fighter. Like, if he genuinely had Thor po Thor's powers and he got a chance to do that, he is fucking people up. And there's one point where Thor and uh, Thor and Captain America are fighting. Thor has Stormbreaker, Captain America has Milner at a point until they're fighting and it gets swapped. He, he goes, no, 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 you take the small you, one. <laughs> you take the small one. <laughs> and that's the thing, even throughout the, the brevity and the seriousness of the fight, they still had humor, which also brings me to the fight and one important thing we got that we have been waiting for since the very first Avengers movie. We finally got the call out. Avengers, assemble. No, no, you gotta do it like he did. He was like, Avengers! Because first of all, everybody is there. Well, and so no, we, you forgot another, another, another callback that they did to Winter Soldier. All of a sudden, hey Cap, hey Cap, on, on your, your left. left. All of a sudden, portal opens. Out comes Black Panther. Then all of a sudden, all these portals fucking open. You're getting everybody from Kung Lang came out like a motherfucker. Kun um, Lun. Kun Lung, my no, bad. No, that's not Kun Lun. Uh, no, because that's Iron Fist. Uh, my bad. Uh, all the people that roll with Doctor Strange. My yes. Bad. All the people that roll with Doctor Strange show up. Karmatage. Karmatage, thank you. Ka all the people from Karmatage show up, which is fucking dope. All we the all, sources. We all thought that Wong's ass had just run off and was never coming back. Wong out here leading the charge. Wong out here leading the charge. All the Wakandans come yep. back. All of the heroes that the guys vaporized come back. So all that shit, you get Avengers assemble, and then the battle fucking goes Wait, down. Wait, he says it because he's sitting there. He was like, Avengers? And he flips up Mjolnir. Assemble. And my theater erupted. So did mine, Because we never, because think about it. We've been chasing that line. He said it. He, he almost said it at the end of Age of Ultron. But they cut it on purpose. Avengers, and they cut, cut it. it. But that's what I'm saying. They've been cutting it. They never will give it to us. So the way we got it, because all of them are now Avengers in the, in this, to an extent. And the fight was amazing, because then Ant-Man becomes Giant Man and just started. He bodied one of them fucking snake carriers. Like, in one, he said... <laughs> like one, <laughs> like the one, like the one Hulk punch punched in the Battle of New York. So here's let we talked about Tony Stark's death, but there is another prominent death that I will say I knew one was going, didn't know which one, and I for some reason couldn't handle it. So when they are in Vormil to get the Soul Stone, it is Black Widow and Hawkeye. Basically, they learn from the Red Skull that in order to get it, you have to take a life for a life, a soul for a soul. It's an everlasting exchange. Now you have to remember those words because everybody assumed that because Thanos killed Gamora searching for the soul stone, soul stone excuse me, she could come back and she couldn't. That exchange is permanent. And so Widow was like, I'm a, no, so black fucking black man, excuse me. Hawkeye's like, I'ma do it. Soon as Hawkeye tries to do it, they about to, they're fighting basically. Hawkeye gets the best of a, a, a Black Widow, excuse me, and then Widow turns around and tells him, tell your family yourself, and hits him with the uh, Widow Stinger. While she's running the jump, he throws an explosive arrow. Throws an explosive arrow, they both fall. He's trying to go, Widow goes, they both go, all of a sudden, the arrow goes to hook him up. Hawkeye has to hold on to Natasha, and she says, Clint, just let me go. And he's like, no. And then she just lets go. And you, I heard my entire theater gasp at the same time because it was like, fuck. And it's weird because she has a movie coming out. <coughs> Go ahead. Uh, don't see me no, don't see me. I mean, I, I, what, I, what was, you know, I got emotional multiple times throughout this movie. Um, that was a big one. Uh, all, what, I, what I appreciate is every single death was earned yes and was at a, was really a catharsis especially with with black widow being one but i think the bigger one for me is definitely tony and i think that that's a good spot for us to kind of wrap this up yeah. with tony started this whole thing he said i am iron man he even said that before he did his snap to wipe out thanos and his people he he told him one more time i am iron man and i think one of the most emotionally powerful parts is like tony is in the middle of dying and pepper comes up to him and says we're safe tony you can rest now. you can rest now and that has been his arc this whole time, is that he went from being the most selfish person in the world to Cap telling him that when it came down to it, you won't be the one that would make the sacrifice, you're not the team player. Him freaking out about the world being at odds and Thanos coming, and he finally did it. And, and the, even Doctor Strange saying there is one way that this plays out, and he throws him the finger and he says one, and Tony at first, realizes Because at first Tony asks him, is this the one? He tells him, if I tell you what's going to happen, then it won't happen. And then Strange is hesitantly, he's making one of the circles and goes, one and Tony sacrifices himself and it brings a perfect closure to the arc of the hit this the ultimate hero's journey it started with Tony it ends with Tony 
and I thought it was a very beautiful way to end this Infinity War saga. There's 22 movies, it's 11 years to see Tony Stark evolve from this billionaire playboy philanthropist yeah. to a genuine hero. But also the best, I think also on top of that, the best way to show appreciation to this film is in the credits. Um, you get all of the supporting members we've seen except for the original six. And when you get them, you basically have them signing their autographs, signing out. Now, we know all of them aren't out, out, but... Most you, of them are. Most of them are. So Jeremy Renner, uh, Scarlett Johansson, Chris Hemsworth, who is now an official member of the Asgardians of the Galaxy. So we now know what volume three is. Um, then you had Chris Evans, no, you had Mark, Mark Ruffalo, Ruffalo, then Chris, Chris Evans, Evans, and, and finally, you had, you had Robert, uh, Downey, Robert Jr. Downey Jr., which again, we, we got to wrap this up. I know. The other thing that I thought was great was seeing Chris Evans also pass the mantle on to Falcon. There was a lot of debate, would it be passed to Bucky or would it be passed to Falcon? I cried my ass off. I thought that that was a beautiful moment, especially from the standpoint of instead of, there was this, there was a big thing about passing the torch to the next generation. I know that Bucky is still very young because he's been, you know, frozen through time and all that kind of stuff. But Sam is the future. He's the one that was yes. actually in this present time. And to give the mantle to him, to give the nod to the diversity, because both of them played Captain America at one point. Right. I thought that that was just a beautiful thing to have happen. And I really appreciate everything that's happened here where we are now setting the stage for the next heroes of the MCU. And there was no end credit scene, no post credit scene. Why? Because there doesn't need to be one. There was a hammer sound, wasn't there? That, that's Tony. At the very end of the that's movie. That's Tony making It's Tony suit. making the Mark One. Mm. If you have to, you have to try to listen. It's going to be difficult. At the very end, at the very tail end of the credits, you hear, ding, ding. That's when Tony made his suit in the cave, where it all started. Let us know. You know our thoughts. Now let us know your thoughts in the comments below, all right? Like, subscribe, click on the notification bell. How pleased were you, were you with Avengers Endgame? Did you find something that was wrong with it? Did it not agree or go along the lines in which you thought it would do? I want to hear your thoughts on that, all right? Winston, thank you for being here with me, bro. Tell our people how they can find you. You can find me at the Swaggy Blur, T-H-E-S-W-A-G-G-Y-B-L-E-R-D on all your socials. And you already know, you find me Twitter, Instagram, at Mr. J. Washington, M-R-J-A-Y. You know how to spell Washington. Join the Patreon, the Super Villain Squad, patreon.com slash Mr. J. Washington. Check out the Mad Titan podcast. Like get you caught up on everything happening in the Marvel DC live action cinematic universes, all right? I will holler at you guys later. Stay tuned.